Hello again. From time to time, one comes across a clip of film posted on YouTube or Twitter, which at first sight seems obviously fake. I will freely admit that I've been taken in by such things myself, before doing a little research and then feeling like a right mug for having even considered even for a moment that the thing might have been genuine. I rather suspect that we've all been taken in by things like that. That's how I felt this morning when I came across an apparent exchange between the BBC's Emily Maitlis and Keir Starmer, in which she asked the Prime Minister in waiting whether he preferred doing business with the World Economic Forum at Davos or in the House of Commons at Westminster. Without hesitation, he replies, Davos, and then goes on to describe Parliament as a tribal shouting place. At first... <clears throat> I found this candor astonishing, but then I thought to myself, no, surely no senior British politician could really have said openly that he preferred doing business at Davos with the World Economic Forum than in the British Parliament. I watched the clip several times and began to spot signs that I thought showed that it had been spliced together, that Starmer had a stilted and unnatural tone to his voice. Maybe this was one of these deep fakes that one reads about in the newspapers. When I looked into it further, though, I found that it was all perfectly true. In the description to this video, I give links both to the clip of film which I saw on Twitter and also a newspaper article which mentions this exchange, which took place just 18 months ago, when Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves, who will soon be Chancellor of the Exchequer, both went to Davos. The more I think about this, the more extraordinary I find it. This country's parliament, where our elected representatives will be sitting next month, the mother of parliaments, Westminster, is dismissed as a tribal shouting place. The meeting of the World Economic Forum at Davos, though, under the leadership of Klaus Schwab, is where the real business is conducted, where things are really decided. In other words, the man who will in a few weeks be the Prime Minister of this country thinks that the globalist conference held each year at Davos is where the real economic agenda is set, where things are arranged and the world's affairs properly arranged. I have never in my life seen such a hideous contempt for British democracy so openly displayed and I think that we owe a debt of gratitude to Emily Maitlis of the BBC for asking this question and revealing the truth. I will say plainly that I am an English patriot and I believe very strongly in the idea of the nation-state. I want the United Kingdom to remain a single, discrete unit, wholly separate from the rest of the world, although of course dealing with and talking to other countries. I see Parliament in Westminster however full it might currently be of spivs, crooks, wide boys, quislings and fifth columnists, as the embodiment of all that I believe to be valuable about this country. It personifies the liberal democracy which so many people used to value here. I might from time to time muse that we need a strong man to govern without reference to Parliament, but I know that isn't going to happen, so there's no harm discussing whether it would be a good idea or not. That is not where the danger to democracy really lies, though. The real menace is internationalism or globalism, or call it what you will. Sometimes this can be seen in the workings of the United Nations and at others during the meetings of the World Economic Forum at Davos. All these things entail a leeching away of power from this country and handing it over to international organisations so that the needs and wishes of Britain are subsumed into a wider context, whether that of Europe or some supposed world government. I want power to remain here with us. Starmer, as he freely confesses, prefers dealing with foreigners to British MPs, whom he feels are just shouting tribes. He really is a dangerous man and the direct threat to Britain's status as an independent, democratic nation-state. 